Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Mr. Cobalt and in today's uh, video I'm going to be talking about isotopes. Um, so what are isotopes? I, I think I mentioned them briefly in my last video. But isotopes are going to be atoms that are uh, of the same element, which means that they have the same number of protons because as we said before, the protons identify the element. So an isotope is going to be, or isotopes are going to be uh, atoms of the same element, uh, but they differ in their mass. Okay, so uh, so that means that they're going to be differ, they're going to be different in the number of neutrons that they have. So um, I don't know if I said this before, but most of the mass is in the nucleus. So here we have our carbon atom again and the center of the atom is called the nucleus and in the nucleus we have our protons and our neutrons and remember what I said before is that the protons and the neutrons are about 2,000 times greater in size and mass compared to the electron so when it comes to the mass of the atom the electrons are really negligible so we don't really factor those in when we're considering the mass of the atom. So 98, 99% of the mass of an atom is going to be dependent upon uh, the center, the nucleus of the atom, which is your protons and your neutrons. And so, so the mass is going to depend on protons and neutrons. So if the neutrons change, then the mass of your atoms change. Um, so again, if, if all three of these atoms are the same element, then they have to have the same number of protons. So the protons are in blue, and if you look at the number of blue dots, they're all six. And carbon has six, uh, uh, six protons, so that means that these are all the same element. However, they differ in the number of neutrons. So the green dots are the number of neutrons. This one has six neutrons. This one has seven neutrons. And this one has eight neutrons. So all three of these are going to be the same element, but they differ in their mass. Okay. So these would be three isotopes of carbon. And so... <clears throat> Um, when we look at how much of each of these isotopes we find in nature, there's a different amount. So, for example, carbon-12, or this carbon that has uh, six neutrons, um, out of all the carbon atoms in, the, in nature that we find, 98.93% of all those carbon atoms are carbon with the six neutrons okay uh, which we call carbon 12 and i'll explain that in a moment uh 1.07 percent of all those carbon atoms that we find uh, are carbon atoms that have seven neutrons and we call that carbon 13. and then this one here the percentage is so small that they represent the amount in parts per trillion. So for every trillion carbon atoms, one of them will be this isotope here with eight neutrons, and we call that carbon-14. You may have heard of carbon-14. Carbon-14 is used in radiometric dating for different things like um, uh, anything that's carbon-based, like fossils and things like that. Um, so these are the uh, percent abundances um, for, or for these three isotopes of carbon. Now, uh, we represent uh, these uh, different isotopes with symbols. And let me just first say that there's another number. We talked about atomic number in the last video. Remember, the atomic number is the number of protons. Um, that is associated with the letter Z. Don't ask me why. There's probably a historical reason for that. Why is it Z? Um, but that's what they chose. So the atomic number is represented by the letter Z. And then we have this new number, 
represented by the letter A. So don't get that confused. You would think that A would represent atomic number, but it's not. It, it represents uh, mass number. And what is the mass number? The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons together. So if you know the number of protons and neutrons, you add those together, that's your mass number for that isotope. And we identify isotopes by their mass number, uh, not by the atomic number because they all have the same atomic number because they are all atoms of the same element. So uh, we use the mass number to identify them because the mass number is going, go, going to be different that's because the number of neutrons is different. And so <clears throat> we represent um, isotopes um, in two different notations. Uh, one notation is if you have the symbol represented by X here, so you write the element symbol, you put the mass number on top, on the top uh, left hand corner here of the symbol, and at the bottom left corner you put the atomic number. So this is one way to write the notation of your isotope. So here's an exa here are the examples of the way I would write the isotopes for these three carbon atoms. And so here you have uh, the symbol C for carbon, capital C for carbon. The top is 12. And how did I get 12? So, but the, uh, the mass number A is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. 6 plus 6 is 12. So this is... Uh, the symbol for carbon-12, and that's why we call it carbon-12. Again, the mass number identifies the isotope. Um, the atomic number identifies the element. Okay, if you can remember that, keep that straight. So, um, so 12 is the mass number on top, 6 is your atomic number. So 6 represents the number of protons, and 12 represents the protons and neutrons together. Same thing for this isotope. So again, you have the symbol C. The top number is the mass number, protons plus neutrons. So six protons plus seven neutrons give you 13. So 13 on top, six on the bottom again, because that's the same number of protons, number six. And for this isotope here, Six protons plus eight neutrons gives you 14. So 14 is the mass number on top, and six is the atomic number on the bottom. And so, again, we identify these by their mass number. So another way that we can um, write the notation for these, for these isotopes is either by the name or the symbol, followed by a dash, and then the mass number. So this is called carbon-12 or C12. Uh, this one is called carbon-13 or C13. And this one is called carbon-14 or C14. And again, the 14, the 13, and the 12 is the mass number, and the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay. Finally, um, I want to talk about how do you determine the number of neutrons in your element. Well, if you know the mass number and you know the atomic number and you know that the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons and you know the atomic number is the number of uh, protons, then you know that, that atomic number is equal to protons plus neutrons. You just solve your equation for neutrons and you get the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number, and that will give you the number of neutrons in your isotope. Um, I hope this was insightful, I hope this was helpful, and uh, if you like this video, please uh, go ahead and like it, share it with others, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications, and make a comment below, and ask me questions uh, about anything you want me to go over. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you guys next time.